Hi, and welcome to lecture 7-1 on map making. This is our second to last theory lecture in this course. And it's on map making, and as you can probably imagine, the last lecture is on localization. Map making and localization actually go hand in hand because it's kind of hard to make an accurate map if you can't localize yourself. And it's kind of hard to know where you are in the world if you don't have a map. The objectives of today's lecture are to describe decomposition strategies for map making as well as exploration strategies. We've talked about a little bit of these already, such as the Voronoi diagram, and also to how to update an, update an occupancy grid by using either Bayesian, Dempster Schaefer, or HIMM methods. And we will also talk a little bit about SLAM and how it aids in map creation. SLAM is simultaneous localization and mapping. Exploration graph construction consists of recognizing already visited locations in the world, backtracking for unexplored openings in the world, and when you're all finished, providing a correct topology of the world. Automatic map making involves the robot learning the environment based upon some coded algorithm, and this has to be done effectively despite having a dynamically and unpredictable or changing world and having a different look due to different perceptions or perspectives of the space. It requires incorporating newly sensed information into the existing world model. It must contain information to estimate the robot's position. It must provide information to do path planning and navigation tasks. And you, this has to be done despite the fact that most environments are a mixture of predictable and unpredictable features. So there should be some type of hybrid control approach. The measure of quality is based upon topological correctness and metric correctness. This can be done with roadmap or graph construction where you identify a set of routes within the free space, such as where to put the nodes, and if it's topology based at distinctive locations or metric based where features disappear or become visible. This can also be done with cell decomposition where you discriminate between free and occupied cells, such as where to put the cell boundaries, or based upon topology and metric, where features disappear or become visible at a discrete interval. Continuous representation. A continuous valued map is one method for exact decomposition of the environment. Continuous maps are only in 2D representation as further dimensionality can result in computational explosion. You combine the exactness of continuous representation with the compactness of closed world assumption. The representation will specify all environmental objects in the map. A low memory map is a 2D representation in which polygons represent all obstacles. Many simulations run exclusively in the computer memory and polygons are not used to describe a real world environment. When real environments must be captured, there are trends for selectivity and abstraction. The human captures only objects that can be detected by the robot sensors, and this represents a subset of all the features of the real world objects. One method of simplification is to approximate the real world environment lines as a set of infinite lines. A more dramatic form of sub simplification is abstraction, a general decomposition and selection of environmental features. The immediate disadvantage is the only loss of fidelity between the map and the real world. It may be useful if planned carefully to capture relevant, useful features of the world while discarding all of the other features. Occupancy grid. To create an occupancy grid, a counter is used to determine how many times a cell is hit by a ranging sensor. As the counter is incremented, the cell is deemed an obstacle. The darkness of the cell is proportional to the value of the counter. Histogramic in motion mapping is one way to create an op occupancy grid, and this is what you're going to use for your map making in your final project. This involves counting the number of times a boundary or obstacle is detected, and after the count exceeds some threshold, the confidence on the map is darkened and the probability of being present is increased. Each cell in an occupancy grid is either occupied or unoccupied. The size of the, robot, of the map in robot memory grows with the environment size. Small cell sizes make the size of the memory untenable. Not compatible with the closed world assumption which enables large sparse environments to have small memory requirements. It imposes a geometric grid on the world a priori regardless of environment details. 